for our Empire Podcast. I'm your host, Abin Walcher. And today's episode is actually um, part of the welcome package when you join the For Empire membership. But once again, it's something I think we all need to hear. And so I'm just going to include it here in our podcast. So when we start out as um, an entrepreneur, when you start out wanting to be more financially independent and you don't want to have a job, you don't want to have a nine to five, uh, maybe you do have a job and you sort of want to have your own side hustle so you can get that extra income. And more than ever, we actually need that extra income, you know. We tend to juggle so many things. We tend to hope that if we create different revenue streams, at least one will come true. At least one is going to give us that breakthrough we need financially. And so we tend to juggle things like um, being a graphic designer, doing merchandising on Printful or Etsy, um, being a virtual assistant, being a website developer, being maybe a WordPress assistant of sorts, um, being a content writer, and just being so many things at the same time. The hope here being that out of all these different um, options, different cash streams, at least one of them would bring us revenue. And from a financial point of view, that might make sense. From a business strategy point of view, not so much. So let's take scenario A. I'm, I'm going to use Maria. So let's say Maria um, wants to make some money. Maria is probably working a full-time job. So Maria has some pretty good design skills. So Maria signs up on Upwork or Fiverr or any other freelancing website as a graphic designer. Um, she's also packaging herself as a virtual assistant. Um, she's also, also packaging herself as the a content writer she's also presenting herself as so many things honestly and so we've all been maria at some point right we've all wanted to have that different cash stream and there's nothing wrong with that it's just pulling ourselves apart we're pushing ourselves in different directions we are chasing four different types of clients in a given day in a given week in a given month and that's not very easy it's a lot easier to have a clear idea of what your target customer for these businesses. So let's say as a virtual assistant, maybe she's targeting a specific type of business. It's a lot easier for her to go to Facebook groups and connect with Instagram accounts or Pinterest accounts or YouTube accounts or Twitter accounts of people that suits the type of customer that Maria wants as a virtual assistant. It's infinitely easier to just have this one idea, one type of customer and put everything you can into getting that client to getting that sale to landing that client i don't have to think of graphic design i don't have to think of constantly updating my portfolio i don't have to think of constantly learning about new wordpress themes and new wordpress plugins and new features of wordpress i don't have to think of any of that i just have to think of i'm a virtual assistant what exactly am i offering what kind of clients do i want where is this client and then put everything into landing this client that's it as a virtual assistant, you can, of course, diversify that and have, you know, different um, service offerings you give within that single business entity that you being a virtual assistant. That still, that still makes a lot more sense than being a virtual assistant, a graphic designer, a content writer on, let's say, we work remotely and, or writing numbers or remote to co, whichever you use. But you're just spreading yourself thin and it's not the best option. You're going to fizzle out. And eventually, you're not going to be able to sustain this because another business idea will hit you and then you'll drop all of this and just jump to that. And that's not really how you run a business. Running a business requires patience. (laughs) God requires patience. And an infinite amount of commitment to your business. Because when you start a business, it's not going to be that very profitable at the beginning. Of course, if you make zero, zero and you have to question your business idea, your business assumption, you will have to make some money. To validate the business idea but you will not make as much as you want and that's cool but you you should commit to this thing so if you cannot commit to one single business idea if you cannot commit to that one single business entity then are you really ready to be an entrepreneur because it's understandable to be a serial entrepreneur we all want to get to that point you all to a degree you know have that idea of being a serial entrepreneur but a serial entrepreneur does not start five different businesses at the same time and grow them all at the same time alone. No, they start the first one, it gets to a particular level of success. Then they start the second one, it gets another level of success. The third one, nobody, at least nobody who is good at business, starts five different business ideas or five different companies at the same freaking time 
and expect it to grow. Darling, you're her human being. You're not a robot. Life gets in the way. Situations come in and you have to account for all of that. You have to factor in that you cannot deal with all of this at the same time. So just stick to one business idea, one single company, one single business entity and put everything you can into this for a year. And if after one year, after one year you've committed all your time, all your resources and this does not work, I would suggest questioning the business idea and your business assumption because something might not be right there. So if, if you had such an amazing business idea, which you thought was very profitable, very valid, and then after a year of putting everything into it, it's not growing, you're not making like actual substantial sales, then you might want to um, really look at what the bottleneck in that business is. And that's a whole different ballgame. But commit to one thing. Commit to one business idea. Do not spread yourself thin. I know they say don't put all your eggs in one basket. But when you commit to one business idea or one single business entity, you can have different offerings toward the same target audience, by the way. To different offerings for the same target audience within that business idea, within that business type. And that's a lot better than five different business ideas, five different target audience, five different um, um, things that you have to focus on. And it's just mentally and physically exhausted. And I don't even understand how you go about marketing this because, you know, like it's, it's very frustrating thinking about it because now you're going to chase different types of customers. Unless you're like on, on week one, I'm going to chase this customer only with two this type of customer only, week three, this kind of customer only. But if you chase everybody with the hope that at least one of them would convert, you get no one. There is a marketing saying that if you target everyone, you will target no one. They simply apply in, you know, applies in business strategy. You cannot target every type of, of client, every type of customer. Darling, you got to niche it down. Okay, that's my advice for you. That's something I think you need to hear. You need to keep in mind as you go about your entrepreneurial journey. So see you in the next episode where I'm going to be interviewing a close friend of mine and a business partner, Patient at Sango. She's going to talk to us about online sales for B2B companies. So if you have a B2B business and you're struggling with online sales, then this episode will be for you. See you.